everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Today's video is going to be on 2013, 14, and 15 Ram Series diesel trucks with the 6.7 Cummings. Problems we're seeing are code P2280, airflow restriction, as well as the air filter service message. Check it out. So the first thing you need to do is if you're getting the air restriction code or you're getting the air filter service messages, we obviously, of course, need to start with inspecting the air filter. Now the cover is held in place with a total of three eight millimeters. Back them out. Now, this perimeter has the bolts. The perimeter back here actually has fingers that go into the lower portion of the box. All you gotta do is kind of lift up pull towards you and then get it out of the way. Now this air filter, looking at it, looks to be brand new. Yet we're still getting the code, we're still getting the message. So no, the air filter is not the problem. Now, if you think the air filter is questionable, go ahead and put one in it. Clear the code or drive it and see if your air filter service message returns. So another thing we need to do is now we need to get down inside the box and kind of look and make sure there's nothing obviously restricting either one of these doors because the way it works is it can get air from the front or the air from the side, which is to the fender well. So it can determine where it wants fresh air to come through. So now we've got the air filter out of the way, we can look down inside the box. Make sure you don't see any kind of debris, paper, rags, whatever. Uh, make sure no small critter has made a house in here and there's a bunch of acorns stuck everywhere. Physically looking, I don't see anything in there. Now the way it works is there's an actuator on the outside of this box over here. It comes through, it operates this door, this door has a linkage going to this door. So when one is open, the other's closed. It just kind of goes back and forth. Make sure the linkage is intact. Make sure the door is not broken. Try not to force the door because you do damage. Just look at it physically, see if you see anything, grab a hold of it, make sure everything's firm. Everything's looking pretty good here. Now we'll, we've got two more locations we can check. We can check where the tube from this axis goes into the fender well, make sure it's not collapsed. And we can also make sure that the air inlet where the going to the turbo is not collapsed as well. Now initially I'd seen where the rubber boot was slightly collapsed. Well, that could be one or two things. I very seriously doubt it's a design flaw in the rubber inlet here. I've got a funny feeling the way the air filter system was restricted, it was just collapsing it by suction because it wasn't getting the flow of air it needed. So I just, and also what could have happened is either that or if someone was, for example, replacing the filter before they may have leaned on it. All you gotta do is push in and you can collapse it. So I went ahead and go press it back out and we're gonna move on to checking where the fresh air comes in through the fender well. The one inlet that we showed on the side of the air box actually comes through the fender well liner here. It's got a flexible corrugated pipe that's real flimsy. You see from time to time where they will collapse over time or um, I've actually seen with small animals have gotten there, chewed on it, ate on it and it actually eventually just collapsed. In order to gain access, we need to take the fender wheel liner off and then we'll take a quick look at it and see if there's actually any kind of problems going on underneath. In order to remove the fender wheel liner, we've got a combination of 8mm bolts and plastic push pin type fasteners. Uh, down here, this is actually the passenger side door, so this is the back side of the passenger side fender. This little splash shield right here is held in place for two 8mm. You work your way up, you got another 8mm here. Go along the perimeter. You got another eight. You got another eight. And then this ten right here, don't worry about that stays with the metal bumper. The way the liner goes around the back side, this doesn't have anything to do with what we're messing with. Now normally these two holes right here, this one and this one would have an eight in there as well. This vehicle evidently has had some body shop repairs to it and they're not in there anymore. These actually go right to the bottom of the battery tray. And then you have a combination of plastic fasteners. Right up in here is a plastic Christmas tree fastener. You've also got one right here and back over here you've got one as well. I personally believe there's no need to take the tire off to get the fender wheel liner off. I can get it off without taking the tire off. That's why I can still do it on the ground. I don't have to worry about jacking it up, getting a jack stand, taking the lugs loose. I can start taking the eights off and just work around the perimeter and then go to those plastic fasteners we talked about. Just as I mentioned before, don't worry about the 10 millimeter that stays there. 
just continue getting your eight millimeters off. And then if you had the two under the plastic battery tray, they would have been there. You would have got those off as well. And that will move on to the plastic push pin style. Now we've got a combination set of different tools I can use to pull panels off or fasteners. I'm probably going to start out trying to use this one at an angle here. It gives me a little more room to get up in things. And then give me a little leverage. There we go. We got that one off. And that's basically what they look like. Little Christmas tree fasteners with large heads on them. We'll go around the perimeter and take all those off. I'm showing three on this particular vehicle, but like I said, there's been some previous body damage. They may have to put them all on, but just go around and get all those off. At this point now, it's just a matter of getting this fender wheel liner out. Just take your time, position it in certain ways, drop it down, make sure it clears everything. You mainly want to get it off this front lip. Once you get it off the lip, it should just fall right back out. There we go. Start getting it down. We'll lift it over where the strut or the uh, cold spring and shot go. Uh, we get that off. Now we can set it to the side. All right. So we have the fender wheel liner out of the way. Now you look up in here between the structural member and the outer skin. You'll see that's where that corrugated pipe, as I told you, it goes for the inlet for the air filter box. And as you can see, we're collapsed in multiple places. That pipe itself is not going to be of any use anymore, and that's probably a lot of our reason for possibly the. Uh, the collapsed rubber inlet for the turbo as well as the code that we have for the air filter restriction and the message for the air filter service message. So what we need to do is let's go ahead and get this thing off. We'll take a closer look again. So this is the part that actually goes into the AC, the air filter box itself. And like I said, as you follow around, here's that corrugated pipe I told you about that you find from time to time that's damaged and collapsed. It's nothing more than almost a dryer vent hose. To me, the length of what it is, it really serves not that much of a purpose. You could actually come back here and probably trim off right about here and just run it without it. It's either that or go buy one. And I think you might have the same problem eventually. I would just trim it off and run it with just a plastic part going to the air filter and you shouldn't have no problem here. Now, if you want to get a piece of PVC pipe that you can find that's about that length, awesome. Probably just cut a, sec a section off, put the pipe over, put your band clamp, and then you've got something solid that will never collapse ever again. That would probably be the best repair in the end. Uh, but currently, this is all I have to work with. And like I said, I'm probably just going to trim it off here and we'll be good to go. It's not going to physically cause any problems. One thing I don't like is how it's just open. Uh, for the other truck I had, a critter actually was able to get in here and get all the way inside the box. It used it as a tunnel. It'd be kind of cool if there's some kind of mesh or something to kind of uh, block anything from getting in there, but unfortunately there isn't. It's just a big gaping hole. All I'm going to do is grab me a razor blade. I'll probably come back about probably a good two to three inches. Just insert, kind of go around. Now, keep in mind, be careful. Don't cut yourself. Cut away from you. Just kind of go around match it up and once you got it all cut off there you go I won't have that problem anymore I'm gonna leave a little access on there reason why is because I want to try to come up with a repair in the near future where I put a piece of PVC and I want something that can still mate to because it's not a perfect circle as far as the plastic but I can make this a perfect uh, circle. And once I find a piece of uh, PVC that probably fit in there or something, I'll get back with y'all and uh, give you an update of something I would recommend doing. But in the meantime, this is what I'm doing because replacing it with another inferior part to me is ridiculous. And more than likely, it's probably a possibility it was collapsed when they did the body work because that whole fender wheel liner, like we already know, was off. So it could have had some damage done to it when someone had worked on it. So it could be design, could be human error. But I think there's going to be a permanent fix coming up. I'm going to try to come up with something myself. So there you have it. You know what you need to check? Start with the obvious. Open up the air filter box. Look at the air filter. See if there's any kind of obvious problems there. If it's questionable, replace it. If it looks good, look at the linkage inside the air box. If that looks good, then I'd probably move on to the most common thing, which is going to be that flexible air inlet. You're going to have to drop the fender liner like I showed you. It's pretty cut and dry. You won't see any problems as far as taking that off. As far as that flexible inlet, like I said, you can cut it off and you'll be fine. Uh, some of the documentation I read 
there's some notations about it may have it on there it may not have it on there so if it don't have it on there logic tells me I can probably do away with it and not cause any problems whatsoever because that 12 inches ain't gonna make a difference as far as air inlet nonetheless at this point I ask for any kind of thumbs up on YouTube don't forget to like me on Facebook Follow me on Twitter and check me out on Instagram. If you got any comments or suggestions, feel free to email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com and I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. In the meantime, keep watching.